I moved to California, Southern California, the 60 hertz work that we did was supported by a contract from the Department of Energy. The radio frequency radiation work that we did was supported by Motorola. The relationship was really very cordial and very stress-free, but only up until we started generating data. They, these folks were very, very upset and began to talk about how are they going to handle this, what sort of spin can we put on this, what can we expect from this, and from that point on the relationship changed. And what we saw was that Motorola began to exert more and more control over the work, telling us what to do, telling us how to write abstracts, what to say in the abstracts, what to say in the papers, um, I said, how to do the work. No, don't do this. Yes, do it this way. This was unacceptable. I had completed our study of DNA damage, and I submitted the final report to Motorola, and I got a call from Mays Swicord at Motorola. Now, Mays is the former head of the Center for, what is it, CDRA, Center for Devices and Radiological Health at the FDA, and he left the FDA and went to work for Motorola. Keep that connection in mind. That's interesting. He also handpicked his successor at the FDA. Um, anyhow, Mays didn't like the work. Then there was another phone call. Point is, I kept getting nothing from these people. They, they simply weren't willing to accept my interpretation of my study, my evaluation of my study, my knowledge of science at that point and tried to urge me not to publish the study. They didn't tell me not to. They just said, no, this isn't ready for publication. And they wanted me to do more work. I stopped taking calls from them, and I went ahead and published the study. Uh, it came out in 1998, and I wanted nothing more to do with any Motorola-related work. I, I wasn't going to put up with that kind of control. I wouldn't put up with that attitude. That was it. I, I think one has to exercise caution at this point. And what makes 